We are now going to be looking at our lump sums from employers. So a lump sum from an employer is when you resign and they give you a lump sum amount, basically almost you could say there's a farewell bonuses, basically just say thank you for everything and here is an amount. They're compensating you because you are leaving the employment. Now important to note, this little comment over here, please note that if you receive a lump sum for leave pay, that this is not considered a lump sum from the employer for the purpose of this definition. In other words, if you receive a leave pay amount, you must include it in your gross income. So it will be taxed as normal. Please understand what leave pay is. Leave pay is, they tell you, for example, you have 15 or 20 days of leave a year. If you don't take them, you still get paid for those days. So when you resign, they might owe you, there might be 10 leave days you could have taken which you didn't do. They will then pay you out your daily rate times 10. Now, that amount is considered the same as a salary, basically, because it's for services rendered. All right, now, important. You will now see that when we are looking at lump sums from employers, that sometimes some of these lump sums will be classified as a severance benefit. If it is classified as a severance benefit, then you will tax it using the lump sum retirement table. In other words, the table for lump sums, remember where the first 500000 is tax-free? Look at what it says, it's retirement and severance benefits. Now, important for you to see here, it means that the lump sum from the employer is a severance benefit, or it is not a severance benefit. And it is only if it is a severance benefit that we look at this rule. So in other words, if it's a severance benefit, you will get these much better tax tables. So it will be taxed along with your lump sums. Right. Which is what you can see over here. So please note, guys, it just means that the place you tax it is different. The place you do your calculation. So my recommendation is for you, if this is your script, to do lump sums and your normal tax separately because you have to have separate tax tables. So you'll have here the lump sum from your provident fund, for example, and then if you have a severance benefit, it will just be added here. Right, your normal tax will have things like your salary, fringe benefits, and if it is not a severance benefit, but it's one of these lump sums, then it gets taxed over here. So, severance benefit gets taxed on the lump sums, and not a severance benefit gets taxed under your normal tax. Right, so when is it a severance benefit? So you can find this in section 1, not paragraph 1, section 1 of the Act, a definition. It says, it means any amount, then you see here they say other than a lump sum benefit in paragraph D3, right? So not those, basically not lump sums or funds. So it says any amount received by or accrued to a person by way of a lump sum from or by arrangement of the person's employer or an associated institution in relation to that employer, in respect of the relinquishment, termination, loss, repudiation, cancellation, or variation of the person's office or employment. Right? If. So let's just go up, up to that point. So it is an amount of a lump sum that you receive from your employer in respect of the termination of your office or your employment. If you resign or you retire, your office is terminated. Right, so that's what they're saying. If you receive a lump sum from your employer because of the termination of your office, then it will be a severance benefit if the following is there. The person has attained the age of 55 years, right? Or, it doesn't say they all, but that semicolon there, because the O or O there means it's an or, so or such relinquishment, loss, Cancellation of variation is due to the person becoming permanently incapable 
due to sickness, accident, injury, or capacity, right? Or the person's employer has ceased to carry on trade, or you have become redundant, in other words, retrenched. But this does not, unless, apply where the person held more than 5% of the shares. Okay, so let's just quickly go through it again. It says, if you receive an amount of a lump sum from your employer because you are losing your office, your employment, it will be a severance benefit if you are 55 years old or you got it because of sickness, accident, injury, or capacity, so you can't work anymore because you're injured, or either the business is closed or you have been retrenched. Right, so only one of these three needs to be met. So if you are not retrenched, you're perfectly healthy, and you are 55 years old, it's a severance benefit. If you win the lottery at 40, and you just decide to retire, you're not 55, you weren't retrenched, you didn't lose your job due to illness or sickness, so therefore, it will not be a severance benefit. Please also note here, if you add 5% or more of the shares in the company, it will also not be considered a severance benefit. In other words, you must be taxed on it. And then just here at the bottom, they tell you, if you die... Because uh, if you die and you get the severance benefit because you died, they will treat it as you received it immediately before your death. In other words, you will be taxed on it still. Right, so this is just a summary of what we just saw.